Hello and welcome to the I, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Manipur Chief Minister N. Birin Singh launched the Rashtriya Poshan Ma 2021 and Matru Vandana Sapta 2021 on September 1st in a function held at Chief Minister's Secretariat. The Assam government has further relaxed their COVID-19 relaxations on Wednesday and eased curfew timings by allowing inter-district inter movement of passenger vehicles and approved resumption of in-person classes for final year students and colleges and schools. A large quantity of drugs was seized in a special check led by S.I. Manojpal Gogoi of Laharijan Police Patrol. Now for the news in details, Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh launched a Rashtriya Poshan Ma 2021 and Matru Vandana Sapta 2021 on 1st September in a function held at Chief Minister's Secretariat. The Rashtriya Poshan Ma is celebrated during the month of September every year to encourage the masses to join hands with the government in addressing issues related to malnutrition amongst young children and women and to ensure health and nutrition for everyone. While Matru Vandana Sapta 2021 would be held till September 7th to create awareness about the noble scheme. Secretary to Chief Minister and Secretary Social Welfare Ning Thaujam Jeffrey and other high ranking officials of the Social Welfare Department also attended the function. The tentative calendars and t shirts of Rashtriya Poshan Ma 2021 and Matru Vandana Sapta were also released at the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Launching the scheme, Singh urged all, all eligible beneficiaries to enroll and avail the benefits of Rashtriya Poshan Ma and Matru Vandana Sapta. While Rashtriya Poshan Ma aims to provide antenatal care, promote optimal breastfeeding, prevention of anemia, among others, the Matru Vandana Sapta provides a cash incentive of Rs 5,000 to pregnant women and lactating mothers. This incentive is meant to provide some financial relief to women during pregnancy and mothers while attending to their infant child. Meanwhile, the Chief Minister also inaugurated the Kisan Mapa Bridge and the Larikyemba Laikai Haikumakong Bridge, constructed under PMGSY over the Imphal River, along with Works Minister T. H. Biswajit Singh on Tuesday. During the inauguration, the Chief Minister expressed confidence that the BJP led Manipur government will be able to bring roads and bridges at par with developed cities in the next five years. Around 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, a large quantity of drugs was seized in a special check NACA led by S.I. Manojpal Gogoi of Lahorijan Police Patrol. About 648 grams of drugs were found in a 50-ounce box retrieved from a bolero bound for Guwahati from Manipur. Two people have been detained in connection to this. The drugs were seized by Lahorijan Police in the presence of Bogajan Subdivisional Police Officer John Das. The international market value of the seized drugs is estimated at Rs 4 crore. The Assam government has further relaxed their COVID-19 relaxations on Wednesday and eased curfew timings by allowing inter-district movement of passenger vehicles and approach resumption of in-person classes for final year students in colleges and schools. Health Minister Keshab Mahanda said the relaxations will come into force from 11 a.m. on Wednesday following the improved COVID-19 scenario in the state. The curfew timings, which were from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m., will now be from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily. Offices, shops and business establishments will have to close down at 8 p.m. and are ahead of the curfew, he said. All government employees administered at least one dose of vaccine have been asked to attend offices and the remaining have been asked to get a jab within the next three days. Pregnant women employees and parents of children below three years of age 
will be allowed to work from home, Mahanda said. Inter-district movement of passenger vehicles, restricted since May this year, has been allowed with 100% capacity provided passengers have taken at least one dose of any COVID-19 vaccine, the new guidelines said. The SOPs stated that wearing of face masks will be mandatory for private and passenger vehicles. Pillion riding on two-wheelers has also been allowed. Mahanda said in person, classes for final year postgraduate, graduate and higher secondary students who have taken at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine were allowed from September 6 and even unvaccinated students under 18 years of age will be allowed to attend final year classes. Not more than 30 students are allowed in each section of a class, the SOP added. Special vaccination drives are being carried out in schools, colleges and universities ahead of September 6. Hostels will open only to students who have taken both vaccine doses. The new SOPs also allow public and private functions in open with the presence of up to 50 persons if the attendees have taken at least one vaccine dose and local police permission to hold the event. However, a gathering of 200 persons who have been administered at least one vaccine dose may be allowed only with special permission from district authorities. For marriages, religious functions and funeral rites, not more than 50 persons who have taken at least one vaccine dose will be allowed to gather, the guidelines said. Not more than 40 persons will be allowed entry into iconic religious places, per hour and in other religious places, only 20 persons will be allowed per hour. All devotees need to have taken at least one vaccine dose to be allowed entry, the SOB said. In the past two weeks, Assam has been recording around 500 to 600 new COVID-19 cases and 10 to 15 deaths daily on an average. The test positivity rate has remained below 1% for the past few days. At present, there are around 5,500 active cases in the state. Russian President Vladimir Putin said Wednesday that the United States' 20-year campaign in Afghanistan ended in only tragedies and losses. The Russian leader has a track record of criticizing Western countries for trying to impose their values on non-Western nations. Moscow has regularly slammed the U.S. policy in Afghanistan, which is now controlled by the Taliban after their takeover this month ahead of the American pullout on August 31st. Putin said that the U.S. Army tried to ingrain their norms in war-ravaged Afghanistan for two decades, which he characterized as a futile exercise. And Vladimir Putin further said that the result is only tragedies, only losses for those that did not that did it for the U.S. and even more so for the people who live on Afghan territory. Putin said that it is impossible to impose anything from outside. He was speaking at a meeting with teenagers in the Russian far eastern city of Vladivostok to mark the start of the school year. Last week, Putin said Russia would not interfere in Afghanistan and that Moscow had learned from the Soviet occupation of the country. He had also complained about Western countries trying to place Af Afghan refugees in Moscow-allied Central Asian states. Moscow has been cautiously optimistic about the new leadership in Kabul, saying it will not meddle in domestic affairs. As the evacuation mission from the Afghanistan ended on 31st August, President Joe Biden pledged to help scores of U.S. citizens who remain in Afghanistan to leave. With the end of the evacuation mission from Afghanistan after the U.S. President Joe Biden stuck to an August 31st deadline to end two decades of bloodshed that began and ended with a hardline Islamists in power, President Joe Biden pledged to help scores of U.S. citizens who remain in Afghanistan to leave and remains committed to get them out if they want to come out. In an address to the nation in Washington a day after the final withdrawal, defending his decision to pull troops out of Afghanistan stating it as a decision for America and it was in the interest of the U.S. national and they no longer had a clear purpose in an open-ended mission in Afghanistan. Enforcement Directorate on Wednesday conducted raids across 10 locations in Kolkata in connection with the fake vaccine case. Officials carried out the raids at different locations in Kolkata. Debanjan Deep, who was impersonating as an IAS officer, was arrested by Kolkata police for conducting fake vaccination drive. On July 3rd, the office of Debanjan Deep was raided by the detective department of the Special Investigation Team. 
According to the Kolkata police, voluminous material such as attendance registers, visitor slips, applications for jobs, fake tender documents and several others were seized. Prior to this, an SIT was formed on June 25th by the police to investigate the matter just days after TMC Member of Parliament Mimi Chakraborty was allegedly given fake vaccination at such a camp. They were sub subsequently arrested based on Chakraborty's complaint. On June 26, the West Bengal government had formed a four-member expert committee to examine the effect of the fake COVID-19 vaccination in Kolkata and also take corrective actions. Goa Chief Minister Pramod Sawant on Tuesday announced that the state will become the first state in the country to supply water free of cost to its citizens starting Wednesday. Launched the Safe Water to Get Free Water Scheme on Tuesday under which households in the state will not be charged for consumption up to 16,000 litres. Assessing a press conference in Panaji, Sawant said, God will be the first state in the country to give water free to the people. They are not giving this water to waste, but want to save water to get free water. He said from September 1, they are reducing water bills. 16,000 liters of water will be given free of cost, starting from today. 60% of the households will get zero bills. Those living in flats or complexes will be able to utilize the scheme. He also announced that small businesses and restaurants will be transferred from the industrial to commercial segment for water boiling, due to which they also will be able to avail the benefit of the scheme. He said small business and restaurants will not have to pay industrial bills anymore. They are moving into the commercial bill slab. They will be able to save money in a big way. OTS has been extended by two months to facilitate payment of pending bills. Amidst the prevalence of COVID-19 pandemic, the Union Health Ministry on Wednesday informed that more than 64.51 crore vaccine doses were provided to states and union territories till date. More than 64.51 crore vaccine doses has been provided to the states and union territories so far through the Government of India and through direct state procurement category, informed an official release by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The ministry further informed that more than 5.21 crore balance and unutilized COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states and union territories to be administered. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had flagged off the first phase of the nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive on January 16 via video conferencing. Since then, the union government is committed to accelerating the pace and expanding the scope of COVID-19 vaccination throughout the country. To ramp up the speed of vaccination, the new phase of universalization of COVID-19 vaccination commenced from June 21 to 2020. In a nationwide vaccination drive, the Government of India has been supporting the states and union territories by providing them COVID vaccines free of cost. In a new phase of universalization of the COVID-19 vaccination drive, the Union Government will procure and supply 75% of the vaccines being produced by the vaccine manufacturers in the country to states and union territories. Meanwhile, India reports 41,965 new COVID-19 cases, 33,964 recoveries and 460 deaths in the last 24 hours as per Health Ministry today. Facebook is ready to launch a digital wallet that would let users store cryptocurrencies, a senior company executive said in a U.S. media interview on Wednesday. Marcus, head of Facebook Crypto Unit, told the information news site that company leader feel pretty committed to launch the digital wallet called Novi this year. Marcus said he would have preferred to release Novi alongside Deem, a digital currency tied to the dollar that the company is also developing, but Deem's timing was uncertain. According to the information, in theory, Novi could launch before Deem, but it would mean launching without Deem. That that's not necessarily something that they want to do. He said, all depends on how long it's going to take for Deem to actually go live, and that's not something he's personally looking after. In 2019, Facebook said it plans to introduce a cryptocurrency that at the time was called Libra. The project, however, faced regulatory resistance over concerns about security and reliability. In December 2020, the Libra changed its name to Deem and moved its operation from Switzerland to the United States as part of a strategic shift. 
India's gross domestic product showed an impressive growth as it shot up to a record 20.1 percent rise in the April-June period or the first quarter of 2021-22. It's a remarkable recovery from the negative growth which was witnessed during the corresponding period of last fiscal when it was a dismal 24.4%, mainly due to coronavirus-induced lockdowns. The remarkable improvement in the June quarter GDP rate, despite the onslaught of the fierce second wave of the pandemic, suggests that the country's economy recovered rapidly after registering negative growth for the first two quarters of 2020-21. to This is the third consecutive quarter when positive growth has been witnessed, as GDP had grown by 0.5% third quarter of 2020 to 21 and 1.6% in the fourth quarter of 2020 to 21. However, the double digit growth in GDP is in sync with predictions of several polls as well as that of the Reserve Bank of India. The central bank had predicted that the GDP in the first quarter of 2021 to 22 is likely to grow at 18.5% from earlier projected growth rate of rupees 26.2%. That's all for the I. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.